Hi again, John Stone, your DIY smart home guy. Isn't that a little cheesy? Who cares? It's catchy. All right, enough of that. Uh, anyway, today we're going to be looking at the GE, Leviton, and Lutron smart wall switches. We're going to take a look at both the dimming and the non-dimming models. It's important to understand what kind of wall switch you need. For example, do you need a dimming switch or a non-dimming switch? And if you think you need a dimming switch, will the circuit you're trying to control even handle a dimming switch? The other thing you need to be looking for is the appearance of the wall switch or the look of the wall switch. There's two types. One is a paddle style and the other is a toggle style. Uh, it's going to depend on what you already have in your house or what you're trying to go to for what look you want to go for. For me, a big consideration was the wall switches that I have in my house already. Now, I'm not going to be actually installing any switches in this video, uh, so be sure to subscribe to my video so you can see the installation process in the next video or two. Uh, that'll be upcoming in the next week or two, but go ahead and hit subscribe. That way you'll get the notification that the videos are ready. So the first two switches we're going to look at are the standard GE and standard Leviton paddle style non-dimming Z-Wave smart switches. Both switches look like normal paddle style switches. Both have small Z-Wave indicator lights that illuminate when the light is off. This makes it easier to find the switch in the dark. Both will work manually even if the smart switch hub is offline and both fit into a standard wall switch box. The GE switch always rests in a neutral position halfway between on and off. When you press the top of the switch, it turns the light on, and pressing the bottom of the switch turns the light off. Pretty simple. In both cases, this is a spring-loaded action, and the switch always returns to halfway or neutral position. So the disadvantage of this is you can't just look at the wall switch and tell if it's in the on or off position. You're going to have to rely on the light you're trying to control or the indicator light on the front of the Z-Wave switch. The Leviton switch, on the other hand, always rests in the on position. This is true regardless of if the light is on or off. Turning devices on or off is always performed by pressing the bottom of the switch, the action you would normally perform to turn a light off. And just like the GE switch, the Leviton only allows you to tell the state of the switch by looking at the indicator light on the front, which for the Leviton it's green, or to look at the light it's controlling. Again, this only matters if the light you're trying to control isn't working and you're trying to figure out if the light bulb is burnt out, you have a power outage, or if the switch itself has a problem. Now, I don't like the Leviton switch as much because my brain is conditioned to push up for on and down for off. I only have one of these switches in my house and I'm always pushing it on the wrong side of the switch trying to turn my laundry room light on. So the next two switches that we're going to look at are going to be the GE Paddle Dimmer and the Lutron Dimmer. One thing I like about the GE Dimmer switch is that it looks exactly like the non-dimming switch. So again, in my house, all switches look exactly the same. To dim or brighten the light, you simply long press the switch to control the dim level. Tapping the switch down quickly or up quickly turns the light off or on, respectively, depending on what you're trying to do. And when you turn it on by tapping it, it always is going to resume to the last level of brightness that the switch was at before you turned it off. Now the Lutron dimmer has a more robust set of features. When you look at the light switch itself, there's actually four push buttons on it and it has seven LED lights. The switch is flat, unlike the GE switch. Two of the switches control the on and the off, while the middle two increase and decrease the brightness. The small LED lights indicate the level of brightness all in all, it's an elegant switch. So I gotta say that I like these dimmers equally, but I have each one in a specific location for a specific purpose. I rarely control the switch manually since my smart home configuration controls on, off, brightness, and whatever I need depending on what's happening inside my house during the course of a day. For example, it always turns on at sunset to 50% brightness. When the front door is unlocked or opened, it instantly turns on bright. Locking the front door will turn the light back to 50% after 60 seconds. When I use my Amazon Echo to control my TV scene, it automatically reduces it to the level that I want for my watch TV anyway. So I really don't care about uh, the function of the, the manual functions of the switch as much as I care about the fact that it's Z-Wave integrating in with my home automation and that I can control it with my Amazon Echo. So 
really it's only the look that I care about and that it matches the rest of the look in my house. So my bar light dimmer, on the other hand, that's a different story. My bar is a far more social area and I run a higher risk of having somebody that's not familiar with my smart home wanting to control the light. The Lutron dimmer is very intuitive and pretty much anybody can walk up and stare at it for about two seconds and figure out how to dim or undim the lights or turn them on or off. Unless, of course, it is my bar and they've been drinking, then all bets are off. So all in all, I like all of the switches that I talked about today. But because of the look that I'm going for in my house and the experience that I'm going for, I plan to stick with the GE switches. I will sprinkle in the Lutron here and there as I find the need for it, uh, but that's going to be few and far between. The GE is a very nice switch, but they're all very nice switches. Uh, I also found that all of these switches integrated perfectly with my Amazon Echo. Uh, it went perfectly into the groups and giving the voice commands through Alexa was very easy. So that about wraps it up for the day. Don't forget to press like and also don't forget to subscribe so that you can make sure that you catch that next video where we're actually installing these switches. Cheers.